Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Superhero Science. Today we're going to look at something that has been bothering me for a long time. What are the effects of Flash running? Wow, first episode ever. One accomplishment. I'm so happy I was actually able to do something with my life. At this rate, I'll actually be able to move it out of my parents' basement, but I won't dream too high. I'd have to pay rent and taxes and balance food spendings and neat spendings and, well, we're getting off topic. Flash's highest documented speed is 240 quadrillion times the speed of light. <sighs> this is why I'm a Marvel fan. They're a lot more realistic. According to these calculations, nothing with mass can move the speed of light, so we can just throw this in the trash. Uh, can you throw that back? First try! For this episode, we'll just assume that this guy never existed and determine the effects of Flash running at these speeds. So Flash is able to run to a point that would normally disintegrate him, and at the very least, burn off the soft tissues of his body, such as skin, muscle, where all of his bones are broken and his tarsals are turned into marrow yogurt. In this situation, all vital organs which are not obliterated would simply fail without the skin, muscular, and skeletal system to support them. So because Flash can run at a max speed of 240 quadrillion times the speed of light, there are going to be many consequences to his actions, like black holes for example. According to these calculations, Flash can generate enough heat that would generate enough friction that the heat would be over the temperature required to create a Kugelblitz. If you have watched the video on Vsauce, How Hot Can It Get?, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, then a Kugelblitz is a black hole generated by the amount of thermo energy released by an object. And it means it's so hot we cannot scientifically understand what would happen because the wavelength would be less than a Planck unit, which, scientifically, is the smallest possible distance. He would actually outrun gravity, which travels at the speed of light and continue to the edge of the universe, where he would smash through the edge. Because he can run faster than it would expand. He would just come out the other side, though, because the universe is theorized to be a four-dimensional sphere. Flash was able to run to the edge of the universe in the Crisis Infinite series, where he ran through the universe so he could recreate it. We would not be able to understand exactly what would happen to Flash or other things in the universe, but we know he can't be all let there be light just because he ran fast enough. Though this is just one of the effects. Take a look at this. If it would to be heated to the point that Flash is generating, the whole Earth and most of the galaxy would be destroyed, and that is only if it's heated to these temperatures for a very short amount of time. So taking into account that Flash is 6 feet tall, or about 1.8 meters, and weighs 196 pounds, or about 89 kilograms, and can run at an extended period of time because of his superhuman attributes, he would generate enough heat to make a nuclear reaction look like an ice cube. This thing within anywhere, yes, he would completely destroy the whole universe because he decided to go for a nice jog around the park, leaving nothing but nuclear wasteland behind him. Another thing about Flash's speed is that he is immortal, because of two reasons. One being DC's answer, which is saying that Flash can run faster than death, or the Black Flash. The second is called time dilation, which is a lot more plausible. Not that any of this is, of course. In layman's terms, time dilation says that the faster you move, the slower time moves around you. This may sound far-fetched, but I assure you it was not. The Halfield and Keating experiment was attested to see if this was accurate. In 1971, J.C. Halfield and R.E. Keating put four atomic clocks on two jets, one heading eastward and one heading westward. The theory was correct that different clocks would be at different points, even though they were both in perfect sync to each other. The eastward flight would change by a subtraction of roughly 40 nanoseconds, and the westward one would change by about 275 nanoseconds. When the clocks had come back to the observatory in Washington after two flights around the world, they had a time difference of 0.15 seconds. For a bit more detailed information, click on this link. So basically, the Flash is immortal if he were to keep on running, which basically he can do forever. So with the ability to destroy the universe and the immortality, Flash is pretty much the most OP character in the DC Universe! Yes, even more than the Big Blue Boy Scout. No matter what you say, your level 100 Mega Blaze against Flare Blitz has nothing on this speedster. Thanks for checking out our first video and giving our channel a chance. It means a lot to us. That's it for this episode. We're the Superhero Scientist, signing off. Mm -hmm.